In this video, I'm going to be talking about logarithms or logs and the basic principle behind what they actually do. So it's an introduction. If you were looking for the laws of logarithms or using them for more complicated examples, check out my other videos. So logs are very misunderstood, I think. A lot of people find them very, very difficult, but with the right understanding, they are actually quite easy. They don't really do anything beyond what you already know. So to explain the principle, I'm going to start with a simple example. So in my example, 2 to the power x equals 8. This example is asking us to find the power that goes with base 2 in order to get the answer 8. So we're looking for the power. We have a way of rearranging this equation that you already know about, which is saying 2 is the x root of 8. That doesn't help us much though, in fact that looks even harder to me. But how would we rearrange this equation to get the x on its own? Now this example is quite simple because you can work it out in your head, you can keep multiplying 2's together. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So actually we know that 2 cubed is 8. So in this example x is going to be 3. But if we consider a more difficult example, something like 10 to the power x equals 52. Now, 10 times 10 is 100. That's straight away too big. So 2 is going to be too big. So the answer is somewhere between 1 and 2. We can use logarithms to find out that exact answer. All logarithms are doing is it allows us to rearrange this equation to get the power as the subject. So it gives us the third way of writing this equation, but to get the x on its own rather than the 2 or the 8. So the way we write it is that x would be equal to log base 2. So there's a small 2 here with the log and 8. This looks horrible and horribly complicated, but it's not. All this is saying is if I have the base 2 and I want to get the answer 8, what's my power going to be? It's just moving the three parts of the equation around. So if we generalise that a little bit more to a more diff um, so that we can apply it to more difficult examples, we've got a base, that's called B, we've got an index or power, so we call that X, and just a number on its own, so M. So we already knew that we could write that as B is the X root of N, but now we have a third way of writing it, which gives us the x, or the power, is going to be the log b of n. So this is saying what power goes with the base b to get the answer n. So you can see in this example, the b, the base, has come down here. The n, the answer that we're trying to get, is here. And it's actually given us the power on its own over here. So if we go back to our previous example on the last page, which was this 10 to the power x equals 52, we know that it's somewhere between 1 and 2. But we can now use this to rearrange it and then hopefully find out the exact answer. So 10 to the power x equals 52. 10 is our base. That's our b. 52 is our number, our answer, and our power or index up here is our x. So we can use this to rearrange using logs. So x, which is our power, is going to be equal to log base 10, and we want to get 52. So if we type this into our calculator, you need a scientific calculator for this, and modern calculators do allow you to type in with any base. We'll discuss that more in a minute. But if you type this into your calculator, you will get out the exact answer. It will tell you what power you need to go with 10 to get the answer 52. So if you type this into your calculator, you should go at 1.716 to three decimal places. And of course, you can check your answer by plugging it back into the original equation. So type in 10 to the power 1.716 and you should get the answer 52 or very close to it because we've actually rounded that. Now, it's worth pointing out at this point that in order to type that into your calculator, you need 
a little button that will look something like that. This allows you to type in any base that you want. Now a lot of calculators don't have that button, they just have a button that says log. Log on its own doesn't really make any sense because it has to have a base. It's asking you, a log is asking you for what power you need and you can't have a power without a base so we always need a base there. But 10 is the most common base that's used or one of the most common bases that is used. So log on its own actually means log base 10. Like when we use a square root sign, we don't bother writing the 2 because it's the most common root that we did, even though if it was a cubed root, we would have to write a 3. So if your calculator doesn't have a button that looks like this, but does have a button that says log on its own, then you can still do this question here because we were working with base 10. However, to work with other bases, you will need to watch my other video, which tells you how to convert to other bases when you don't here have the ability to type in the base that you want. But for now, we will continue with where we're going and move on. So the key points so far is that although we're using this new word log and it looks scary and horrible, all it is doing is allowing you to rearrange an equation that has a power so that you can find the power. So, for example, if I type that into my calculator, or if I saw that written down, all this is saying is what power goes with the base 3 to give me 27. So it's effectively asking me if we call that answer y, 3 to the power of what, 3 to the power of y is 27. And if you did type that in, you would get 3 because, of course, 3 times 3 times 3 gives us our 27. So it's nothing terribly new. It's just a new way of writing things. So to see if you really understand it, without using a calculator, see if you can answer these following questions. So log 10, 1,000. Let's go log 100. See if you can remember what it means if there is no base written there log 3 1, log base 3 of 1, and log base 2 of 16. Pause the video and have a go. So here are the questions that I asked you to have a go at without a calculator, just to check that you really understand what it means. So this first one, what power goes with the base 10 to give us a 1,000? So if we think about 10 times 10, 100 times 10 is a 1,000, so it's 10 cubed. So our answer isn't 10 cubed, our answer of course is 3, because 10 to the power 3 is 1,000. So remember when there is no little base written there, it means base 10. So this is saying what power goes with the base 10 to give us 100, and of course that is 10 squared, that's 100. This question then, what power goes with 3 to give us the answer 1? Of course, that is zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. So in fact, it didn't matter what base we had there. Any base, if we want the answer one, we need the power zero. And finally, what power goes with two to give us 16? Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So the power is four. Good job if you got those all right. If you didn't, have another look back. Hopefully, you now are starting to see that logs are not that hard. They are just a way of rearranging an equation with a power in it, moving the three parts of an equation, the base, the power, and the answer, to get this power on its own. So what power goes with the base B to give us N? And that would be our power. So now you're ready to move on to more difficult things, have a look at my next video on the laws of logarithms and hopefully you'll be able to start using logarithms to solve more difficult equations.